Hello everyone, I hope you guys are having a fabulous Thursday. Today I want to share my Louis Vuitton All-Stars. Now I realize that in past videos I have discussed uh, bags that I've sold and why. I've also talked about my current handbag collection, but I've never really gone in depth as to the whys. Why some of these items are still in my collection. Why I consider these specific ones to be All-Stars. And even though I have touched base on, you know, throughout various different videos, I figured that putting them into one dedicated video might be a little bit more helpful and that way you you guys can understand as to why I consider these particular items to be all-stars. Throughout the 10 plus years that I've been buying luxury handbags, I have had bags that are in the same type of category or have the same type of silhouette. Uh, for example, hand carry bags or um, shoulder slash totes. And uh, even though I might like them, I end up selling them because either they didn't end up working out for me or I just completely just fell out of love with them, if you will. And I do have a video of uh, bags I've sold and why, kind of like what I touched base on earlier. And I will put that on the description box below. That way, if you guys want to have a little bit more uh, inside or maybe just see some of the bags that I've had throughout those 10 years, uh, then maybe that will that video, that video will end up being helpful to you. So I will make sure and put that on the description box below. But these ones, these particular ones, I feel I will at the very least have for many, many years to come, if not for forever. And some of these I have had for uh, quite some time and others I've had for a couple years, but I still end up reaching for them nonetheless. And these uh, bags and these small other goods, I feel that they outperform all of the other items that I have in my collection. If you've been watching my channel for some time, a lot of these items aren't going to be a surprise, especially because uh, when I end up liking something, when I'm really passionate about something, if you will, I end up talking about it over and over again. And I often joke about the fact that I, <laughs> I feel that I talk your guys' ear off about particular items. Uh, but if you are new to my channel, I really, I sincerely hope that this video is helpful. When it comes to the hand carry category, there is no other handbag that has exceeded my expectations more than the Speedy 30, the classic Speedy. Uh, even though I do have a bandolier on my wish list, I do appreciate the bandolier. I appreciate what it comes, what it brings to the table, but I've always just kind of gravitated more towards the classic uh, silhouette. So I'm going to be honest with you guys. Uh, like I've mentioned in other videos, I did used to own the 35. I had it in two different prints. I had it in the Damia bin and in the monogram, and they have since left my collection. So when it comes to the Speedy, when it comes to the 30 in particular, I'll be honest with you guys. When I went into the boutique, I looked at the 25. I looked at the 30 and I looked at the 35 and I was looking at three, all three of them. And there was really one thing that ended up just kind of pushing me towards getting that 35. And that was the price because I figured, you know, it's a bigger bag, go bigger, go home. You know, it's only a little bit more than the 30. It's only a little bit more than the 25. It's a bigger bag. And I just kept thinking it's a bigger bag. It's a bigger bag. It's a better value. And I went for it. But even though it's only a five centimeter difference between the three sizes, they are, I mean, they are just worlds apart. Not only do they end up looking a little bit different on your body frame when you end up carrying them, they still end up carrying quite a bit, whether you go for the 25, the 30, or the 35. The 35 obviously carries, I mean, a, a lot more in there than you, than you can imagine. Uh, but I just, I fell, I, I fell for the 35 because I figured, again, the price, the value, there's just, that's the one that I should go for. That's the one that I should go for. And I kept reminding myself. Now, even though I did use the 35 and I loved that bag, there were just a few characteristics of it that I didn't really, um, you know, I didn't really feel comfortable with. And number one is the fact that the Speedy is known for having, you know, a bit of a sag down here, especially if you're the type of person that doesn't end up using a, uh, a bag organizer. I don't. It's not my preference. Um, not that there's anything wrong with it. I know a lot of people swear by them and they think they're, they're fantastic and that's great, but it's just not for me. I prefer to throw my items in there and even if it gets jumbled, then it's okay because it's another characteristic of this particular silhouette. Now, even though the sag doesn't bother me because like I said, it's a characteristic on the 35, I kind of tried to overlook it because it was just very noticeable. It almost, um, even though this is a little doctor, a uh, little doctor satchel and it doesn't have, you know, all these dividers to keep up its shape, it still ends up kind of just sitting in the upright position quite easily. But when it came to the 35 and when I was carrying it, I felt that all of my items would just kind of like kind of fall to the bottom and it would just make the bag look really flat. And it was very uh, unappealing to me. Uh, you know, and like I said, this isn't a knock against anyone that has any of these items that I'm going to, um, that I'm going to, um, 
compare these two, but these are just my two cents. So I felt that it was a little bit unappealing and sometimes because it was bigger, and I've mentioned this also in other videos, when I end up carrying bigger bags, I end up just throwing more items in there. They might not be things I need to carry on the daily, but I figure, oh, I just need to utilize that space. I need to utilize that space and I just keep throwing things in there. And what ends up happening is that the bag ends up getting <laughs> very, very heavy. Now, since the Classic Speedy doesn't have an extra strap or anything like that, it ended up killing uh, you know, my, uh, my arm here when I would carry it on the crook of my arm. It would just be, you would kind of see the dents <laughs> on my arm here. But I just kept thinking it's a better value. It's a better value. So then I finally went into the boutique. I tried out the 30. I fell in love. I fell madly in love with the size. And I can tell you that even though I might end up overstuffing this bag, it still doesn't have as notice as noticeable of a sag as the 35 did. I feel it's a little bit more proportionate to my body frame. I am five foot five and I am on the curvilicious side. I've mentioned that as well. Uh, and I just felt that it was just more me. I do like the 25 and that is on my wish list. Uh, but I like that for the bandolier because I just felt that crossbody it would look a little bit better versus a hand carry bag. I feel that the 30 is just the right the right size, the right style, the right silhouette for my body frame and for my lifestyle. So that is why I consider the Speedy 30. Uh, it's not really as specific as to the print uh, because I do have a Mon Mano and I do have the Damier Zor. I am looking to get the Damier Ben in the classic Speedy. Uh, so I, you know, out of the two, I end up reaching for the Damier Zor the most, but regardless, whether it's uh, Damier Ben, whether it's Mon Mano, Monogram, or Damier Zor, I just really appreciate the 30 because I end up just gravitating towards it over and over again and I feel that I use it a lot more than I ever did the 35. Uh, so that is why I consider this my uh, hand carry all-star. Now on the shoulder bag category, I ended up lumping together totes and hobos uh, because even though I do love the hand carry bags, uh, there is just something about totes or hobos in general that I absolutely love, uh, especially because it just, I don't know, it's just so easy to just throw them on your shoulder and be able to be hands-free, a different kind of hands-free. So throughout the years, I have had, um, you know, quite a few different silhouettes, quite a few bags from this category, but again, this will not be a surprise because it is my my ode to the Neverfull MM, in particular the MM, because for me, the GM, it is just a tad, um, it's a tad too big. Uh, I feel that it's a little overwhelming for my body frame and the PM, I'm not too crazy about it because the straps end up being a little bit shorter. So if you end up having to, um, to use a coat or a sweatshirt or something a little bit thicker over uh, over your clothing, it's a lot harder to be able to put over your arm. Uh, of course, if you're very petite, then you don't have this issue, but I am not petite and uh, that's just something that I noticed with the PM. So the MM, I just feel is just such, <laughs> it is a simple bag. It holds its structure. I believe it does. It holds its structure. I know some people have said that it ends up being very floppy. And I do have another example that I'm going to show you. But this bag, it's simple. It can carry so, so much. My goodness. It is very, very versatile. Uh, that's something that I also uh, talk about often on my channel is the versatility of something. Because if you're going to spend this amount of money on any type of luxury good, uh, at least in my mind, I feel that I want to make sure that I am utilizing it. I want to make sure that it's something that is in daily rotation and not just sitting there looking pretty on my shelf. I don't have that luxury. So to me, the MM is just a bag that when I feel that when I, when I can't really make up my mind as to what bag I want to go for, you know, I'm kind of sitting here thinking, should I go for this? Should I go for that? 99% of the time without fail, I go for a Neverfull just because they are so easy to carry. They are so easy to use and they're very, very casual and I am a casual dresser. So it very much so suits my lifestyle. So even though the MM, um, you know, it might look like it's just a boring tote. There's really not much going on. It doesn't have too many bells and whistles, but that's what I like about it. It doesn't have to have all of those extras. Now, if you, if you're not too fond of this particular, um, of how it looks like this, obviously it has has these little guys on the side that you can cinch it in and it gives you a little bit more of a different look to the handbag. Uh, so you have, you know, two, two looks in one, if you will, but the versatility again with this is endless because you can use it in so many you know, in so many types of situations and so many types of environments. Uh, and 
I wanted to also, like I said uh, before, this one has <laughs> my MM in the Tammy Azor has lost, has lost its shape just a tad. Uh, I've had this bag longer than uh, my mo uh, than my monogram. Now this this Tammy Azor <laughs> never full is my most used Louis Vuitton bag. Uh, maybe not so much now, but this bag I have put through the ringer. I promised myself I wasn't going to baby it. Now, Damia Azor is known for um, being prone to color transfer. I'm not gonna sugarcoat it, it is. Now, you have to be very careful with um, you know the type of uh, shirts that you're wearing, or if you're gonna hand carry it, obviously it might end up rubbing on your jeans if you're having, if you wear um, jeans that have a lot of dye. Now, I have had this bag, <laughs> I think, for seven plus years now, and I barely got color transfer on it last year, so maybe that's why I don't use it as much. It's not very noticeable. I, I Actually, I couldn't even tell you where it is because I freaked out <laughs> and I ended up taking, um, what's it called, uh, dish soap to it right away to try to pull it off. So, I don't know if you can see it. Probably not. Actually, you can a little bit. It's a little bit on the bottom here not too too noticeable of course it's getting darker um i don't know because the because of the lighting but you can see how much i've used it because look at that look at that patina it is beyond honey brown now it is turning into the into the brown category there's no honey about it but i still love this bag and even though i might not use it as much again the mm size is just something that um i, I love you know and i've tried to go for a different size i even thought about getting a mon mono uh, gm but i still end up going back to the mm because that's what ends up working out for me so uh, as far as print goes um as far as the print that i would choose for the mm in the past i would say the demi azor and um I didn't have, you know, like I said, too many, I didn't have issues with color transfer until last year, but it's, it's a really fun print. And I felt that it kind of, uh, even though a lot of people where I live end up carrying Neverfulls, I don't see the Dami Azor too often. So maybe that's why I ended up gravitating towards it more. Um, and now I feel that I go for the monogram a little bit more. And I will have to say that between uh, these two, and I also have the MM in the Damier Ben, out of the three of them, the Damier Ben is the one that I use the least because of the color treated leather, the straps, when you put them on your shoulder, they end up kind of digging into your shoulder. So I don't use it too often. I still use it quite a bit, but not as much as these two. Uh, actually, not, not as much as <laughs> this particular one. So again, the fact that you have a very comfortable strap, something that doesn't end up digging into your shoulder. I mean, you could put, you could stuff this thing to the brim and it's still fabulous. Uh, so that is why this bag in particular is my all-star. Now, when it comes to the crossbody category, I am relatively new because uh, in previous years, it was never a type of bag that I would go for. Um, like I said before, I would go for the uh, shoulder bags or the hand carry because that's just, that was just more my style. And it wasn't until this particular bag came along and I gave it a chance and I haven't looked back. It has really been what I call a game changer in my collection because now I understand and now I realize and I can give credit to crossbody at what it brings to the table and that is the Pouchette Matisse. So this is the bag uh, that I've had for uh, I think it'll be two years in uh, April maybe or May that I've had it and even though this is my second one because I did have an issue with um, with the uh, with the glazing this was replaced by Louis Vuitton. Uh, I still love this bag. I still reach for this bag. And I love the fact that I am able to go crossbody. I love the fact that I'm able to go hands-free, especially if I'm going somewhere where it's very, very crowded. Uh, the hand carry bags are fantastic. I mean, they're great. The shoulder bags are great as well. But when you're in a crowded area, the last thing I want to do is constantly keep push, you know, like pulling up uh, my shoulder bag or having to worry about what I'm bumping into. And when it comes to the cross body type of style, I like that it ends up laying flatter up against my body. And that's exactly what this bag is. It's not too bulky. It's not too bulbous. So when you put it on, I feel like it doesn't end up catching. And you know what I'm talking about when you go into, um, and you, when you go into stores that have really, really narrow aisles and there's other people in the aisle. And when you, <laughs> when you kind of move past them, you brush up against them. This one doesn't end up sticking out as much. So I really, <laughs> I really like that aspect about it as well. Uh, but there is one more thing that I appreciate the most about the Pouchette Matisse, and that is the strap. 
Now, when I first looked at this bag at the boutique, I figured, why not just get a vaquetta strap? Now, I know some people say vachetta. I say vaquetta, tomato, tomato. Uh, but when I looked at the strap, I thought, why wouldn't they go for a vaquetta strap? It just makes more sense. It's a lot more comfortable. Uh, and it didn't, you know, I just, I couldn't fathom why they would go for something like this. But this strap, even though it is canvas, it doesn't end up digging into my chest. And that's something else that I've touched base on before on my channel. I do have a large chest. So when I do go for, um, when I try on crossbody bags, sometimes I end up digging in and they feel very, very uncomfortable. And I thought it would be the same thing with this, but I haven't had any issues. Uh, but the best thing about this particular strap is the fact that it doesn't have any type of leather. So that way, if I am wearing a darker shirt, if I am wearing uh, something, um, or if I'm putting this crossbody and it ends up rubbing up against my jeans, I don't have to worry about color transfer. And another great aspect about this strap is the fact that it is adjustable. I have the Alma BB and I love that bag. Uh, I have talked about it on various favorites videos, but it doesn't have an adjustable strap. And this is something that I love because whether you're taller, whether you're shorter, whether you're curvilicious, whether you're petite, you can end up making this to how your body style is. And it's kind of like a, um, what, what's the word? Um, one size fits all type of thing, but you can adjust it. <laughs> so I love this aspect for it. And again, even though this bag might be a little flat, it might look like a little briefcase, you have quite a bit of space in here that you can put all of your items in here. So I've never had an issue with fitting, you know, all of my daily essentials. And I just, I love the bag. It's, it's just a beautiful bag. It is, um, something that I consider, um, a bag that I will have in my collection for many, many years to come, kind of like what I uh, discussed at the beginning of the video. I feel that this is a bag that I, I, like I said, is a game changer because now I appreciate the whole crossbody and whatnot. And I've had Eva clutches. I like Eva clutches, but this one just fits so much more than any of the other crossbody bags that I have had in my collection. But like I said, I am relatively new to the whole crossbody. So I just figured I would uh, share my, uh, my all-star for crossbody. <laughs> Now on to small leather goods. When it comes to small leather goods, I look for two things in specific. Number one, uh, I look at the versatility of the item and I also look at the cost per wear because kind of like what I mentioned earlier, to me, it makes more sense to have something be used quite often than have it just sit um, on my shelf being unused. So. I wanted to start off the small of the goods with an item that I have raved about forever and a day. I have talked about probably since the beginning of my channel, and that is the mini pochettes. The mini pochette, I have it in the um, in the monogram canvas as well. Now I can tell you this item has paid for itself a million times over, and I often get asked if I prefer the mini pochette or the toiletry uh, 15. Now when it comes to uh, using the mini pochette as a cosmetic case, um, I have had the cosmetic cases uh, before, the cosmetic pouch, I'm sorry, the toiletry 15, the toiletry 26, the mini pochette, and even out of all of those, I still prefer the mini pochette. There is something about the size that I end up uh, preferring over the toiletry 15 because whenever I end up going a little bit more compact, like let's say if I'm going into my uh, Chanel medium large, the toiletry 15 is great, but it's a little uh, too structured. So therefore it ends up taking away from how much I can end up using in my handbag. Now the mini pochette, because it doesn't have you know, it doesn't have too much, uh, too much structure to it. I'm able to kind of mold it a little bit more and just kind of fit a little bit more in there. Uh, so that's what I do like about it. And, uh, it, like I said, it's paid for itself a million times over and it is so incredibly versatile. It, I mean, I've used it as a catch all, as a cosmetic case. I've used it as a wallet. I've used it, uh, for so many different things. Sometimes I've used it as a little clutch because you can just attach this little chain here. Hang on. <laughs> I'm getting all excited. And you just put the chain um, on the little clasp and then you're out the door. You have a little clutch. Uh, some people have also put their crossbody straps on this just to have it be a little bit more versatile. So uh, again, the versatility is awesome on this and uh, I, I just like how, how easy it is to carry and I don't have to think twice about it. Now between the two prints, because I don't have the Demi Azure, which one do I end up going for more? And that is the Demi Ben. And it's specifically the Demi Ben because it does have the color treated leather. So I don't 
don't have to worry about it. I don't have to worry about any type of uh, water stains. I don't have to worry about any type of patina. Even though this is a relatively small, um, you know, small piece of leather, again, it's just one more thing that I don't have to worry about. And I just want to show you guys just how much wear this thing has because I have put it through the ringer. Check it out. The zipper is tarnished. It's chipping, but I don't care because when it comes to small leather goods, that's another thing. I don't want to baby them. I don't want to think twice about them. I want to be able to just throw them in my bag and that's it. <laughs> you know, not have to worry what's going on in my bag. How is it, how is it um, getting along with the other small leather goods? I don't know, <laughs> but that's just me. That's what some of the, some of the thoughts that go through my mind. <laughs> on to another small leather good that uh, I think a lot of people will agree is uh, their all-star and that is the clay. Uh, this was one of my very first, this was my first piece, the monogram clay. And uh, I have actually had the zipper repaired once, I think maybe twice, I can't, maybe once, uh, but you can see it has quite a bit of wear on it. Uh, but this item, uh, it's just one of those that I feel that uh, does get the credit that it deserves because a lot of people swear by this item. A lot of people love this item being in their collection. I will take it one step further and between this clay or this key pouch and the Emprunt one, this one, I end up using this one a lot more. And that's because of its size. Uh, sometimes when I do end up going compact, I tend to go for the Emprunt one just because I can fit a little bit more in there if I'm going to use it as a wallet. Uh, if I end up using this as a wallet and if I have to put money in here, I have to end up, you know, kind of folding the money a little bit more than I would like. Uh, and sometimes doing that, it takes away from how many cards or what else I end up having to carry in here. So it is still a wonderful item, but I end up preferring the Emprunt one a little bit more. Plus, the leather is very, very carefree. Uh, now, one thing to note, uh, Emprunt leather is known for, uh, obviously, it's embossing, right? You see the beautiful, prominent LV and the flowers throughout. So over time, as you end up using this, it'll end up kind of flattening out, and it won't be as, um, as uh, prominent, but... I haven't really experienced that with this clay, and trust me, I have used it to the moon and back. Uh, I like it so much that when I end up uh, when I end up going for a forever item, when I end up thinking about an item that will be uh, in my collection no matter what, I end up hot stamping it. That's just how I prefer to do things. Uh, just because uh, if I was to end, if I was to ever sell anything, uh, obviously when you when you put in uh, hot stamping into the into the equation, I can't talk for some reason. Uh, it ends up kind of taking away from the value because you you know there's not too many people that might have your exact. Um, what's it called, your exact uh, initials. So that's something to just keep in the back of your mind. So I ended up getting it hot stamped. As you can see, it has my initials on there, MD. And I also did one more thing to it. <laughs> if you watched my Minx Monday, a lot of you already know, I took the chain off. Uh, and even though I do like the chain on this item, so if you were to use your keys in here, um, the chain sometimes gets in the way if I'm using it as a little mini wallet. And that's what I end up you know, using it for the most. So I took the chain off. I haven't looked back and I think it is wonderful. It ends up working out for my lifestyle a lot better. Uh, and I will also have to say that if you are looking to get a, uh, a key holder um, and let's say that your key fob is very, very bulky, the, the Emprunt clay, because of its size, will end up catering to those those bigger key fobs a lot easier. So that's why the Emprunt clay, more so than the regular clay, is my all-star, just because it can fit a little bit more in there and it adds a nice little pop of color, or uh, lack thereof, if you will, because it's black. <laughs> but it adds a nice texture variety to whatever I'm carrying in my handbag. This next item, I promise I won't spend too much time on it, especially because I have talked about it for years. Yes, not months not weeks, years. <laughs> I have raved about this item. It was actually the first item that I ever talked about on my YouTube channel, and that is the six ring key holder. Now, this item is fantastic for so many different reasons. Uh, and I also want to let you guys know, if I was to get rid of all of my handbags, if you took away all the small leather goods and everything else, this is the item that would stay out of everything else because I love it that much. I have talked about it that much. Uh, it has considerable wear. It 
it has substantial chipping to it. I have had it for 10 plus years, but this is the best, hands down, the best investment I have ever made in the luxury world. And that's because if you are, if you're going to be spending the amount of money that you're going to be spending on luxury handbags, if you're going to be spending the amount of money on small leather goods or anything else, the last thing that you want to worry about is your keys, your car keys, your house keys, what have you, rubbing up against your other small leather goods or just kind of damaging the interior of your handbag. And what better way to house it all than with this? Uh, I don't have to worry about this. I don't baby it at all. It has fallen on concrete. It has fallen on asphalt. It has been kicked under the car. And, you know, it has a lot of wear on that little button there, but it has it has kind of given me peace of mind because I don't have to worry about my car keys. I don't have to worry about anything else that's going on in my handbag because it's all kind of secure in here. Uh, and that's another one that I uh, hot stamped again because it is considered my forever item. And that's what I end up doing. But check out the wear and tear that it has. Uh, if you guys follow me on Instagram, I did an ode <laughs> to my uh, six key holder and why I think it's so fantastic. Uh, but, you know, I just feel that this item, it might be so old fashioned and some people might think, why, why would I want to carry this? It doesn't make sense, but it makes sense to me. And it has given me again, that peace of mind when it comes to what's going on in my handbag. And I feel that this, this particular reason is the reason that, uh, or this particular item is the reason that my handbags don't have as much, they don't have wear. They don't have any type of key marks. They don't have any type of scratches. They look almost pristine on the interior because of this. Uh, so again, I don't want to spend too much time on it. I've already talked about it for two and a half minutes. <laughs> That's quite enough, but best, best investment ever, ever in the luxury world. So the six ring key holder. Now the last item that I wanted to share with you, it isn't a handbag and it isn't a small leather good, it is a scarf. And it is the denim shawl in the color noir. Now the reason why this is my all-star is because not only the fact that I end up gravitating towards it the most, but when it comes to Louis Vuitton scarves, out of all of the ones that I end up, uh, out of all of the ones that I have, I end up gravitating towards this one the most because it's so easy to hide the snag marks. It's so easy to, or the snags, it's so easy to hide the wear marks on it because you have kind of uh, that two-tone effect to it. So on the back side, you have a little bit more gray uh, with a tiny bit of black. And then on the other side, you have mostly all black with a little bit of gray. So it makes those snags really easy to hide. And uh, I will be honest with you, when it comes to Louis Vuitton shawls in general, they end up snagging very easily. Uh, you know, sometimes even if you're trying to be really, really careful, they end up snagging. They are sometimes prone to pilling. Um, maybe not so much as the Locomania. Uh, but even with all the beauty marks, as I like to call it, that end up occurring when I use this, uh, it doesn't bother me because I feel that even with all of that said, I still end up gravitating towards it, especially because of the color. I like the combination. It's very easy to pair with anything else that I have in my wardrobe. And uh, sometimes I'll stuff it into my handbag. Sometimes I'll just throw it into my car. I don't really think twice about it. And uh, I feel that this item is also very versatile. So you can use it as a little mini blanket. You can use it as a little shawl. Uh, obviously as the name states, and there's other uses that you can um, end up um, having it for, but I feel that it, it ends up paying for itself. It's paid for itself over and over again because I have used it so often. Uh, and I just, I really like the quality of it. It is lightweight to the point where you can use it year round, but it's also uh, warm enough to use when it's very, very cold outside. So I, I just love this. And I thought I would just kind of throw it in there because I do use it so often. And, um, even though I do discuss it in favorites videos, I think that th this is by far an, an all-star when it comes to any of the other scarves that I have, just because out of all of them, this is the one that when I can't make up my mind, kind of like what I talked about with the Neverfull, I end up going for it because it's so easy to pair with anything else. And I just want to show you guys how <laughs> some of the snags, I just lost it, um, some of the snags that you can see on here. So I'm not trying to, to blow smoke because I'm not going to sit here and say, oh, they look fantastic. Where is it? Right there. Right there. See that pulled thread? Uh, some sales associates, um, I have. I did have one in the beginning. Uh, whenever I would have a snag, I would take it into the boutique and she'd find it and she'd pull on it and then make it look perfect. But now I'm just like, I don't care. Uh, like I said, those little beauty marks that it has, 
or just uh, <laughs> give it a little bit of character, <laughs> another characteristic that you can appreciate about it. Uh, all right, you guys, so that does it for my Louis Vuitton All-Stars. Like I said, it's kind of a spin on favorites because I feel that it's a lot more. These have definitely outperformed uh, any of the other items that I have in my collection, and I hope this video was able to help, especially if you're looking to start your collection, uh, you know, especially because there's so many different videos out there. There's so many opinions, and of course, when it comes to All-Stars, when it comes to any type of handbag or any small leather good or anything else it's whatever makes your heart sing whatever um you know kind of speaks to you and you know becky sue and bob and me can have a certain opinion on a handbag but it's all about you and it's all about what you like and what works out for your lifestyle uh just because you know let's say 50 people rave about a certain item doesn't necessarily make it great uh it can end up being something a little bit different that you end up going for so always always listen to your heart and always go for your gut instinct uh especially if you're deciding between two different items and you go into the boutique it's always best to have them side by side and kind of figure out okay which one do I like the most? This is the one. And maybe it'll end up being a uh, an all-star kind of like one of mine. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, if you did, please give me a thumbs up. And if you haven't already and you would like to, please subscribe to my channel by clicking this link up here. Uh, and I figured that I would also include another video down below to check out. And if you guys want to see another video like this, maybe uh, with my Chanel collection, let me know in the comment section down below. And as always, make it a fabulous day or not. The choice is yours. Have a great day, you guys.